boxersandbrawlers.com here at Morones Boxing House of Champions with none other than Rick Morones. Rick, how's it going? It's good, man. It's good. Just getting a little workout. How you been? Now, we're good, man. Good, good. Rick, you are now the hottest trainer, one of the hottest or the hottest trainer in San Antonio area looking to get into national media now. I mean, you are actually now training big names. How did you do that? How did you get in position to do that? Well, I mean, to make it real quick and short for you, man, it's, it's God, man. You know, everything I do, I involve God in it and, you know, um, a lot of work. I put a lot of been doing this 11 years. So I'm doing a lot of work and I've been fortunate by the good Lord to put me in great positions here in the sport of boxing. Yeah. So you've been in the trenches already for a long, long time. I've been doing this 11 years, yeah. I've been in camp with uh, Juan Manuel Marquez, uh, Floyd Mayweather. Um, with Pedro Vasquez? With Pedro Vasquez. The key, the, key, the key I learned, man, was uh, when I first started being a trainer, I put a platform on myself and I said, you know, this is where I want to be. So at that time, I looked at who was there. We were talking guys like Robert Garcia. We were talking Joe Goosey. Emmanuel Stewart. This shirt was actually given to me by Emmanuel Stewart. Emmanuel so, Stewart. Um, you know, so I became very good friends with these guys. I built relationships with them, and you know, and I picked their brains, man. And, and I've been learning from, like I said, some of the best trainers in the world for the last 11 years. You are a second generation fighter trainer. Uh, how does that help you moving forward? Well, I mean, it helps me as a fighter, you know, as well being a fighter because I, I look at different aspects of the sport as far as things that I would do if I was in there. You know, but the, it, it, for me, it's it's a lot of trainers, a lot of fighters that become trainers, you know, they can't make that, that adjustment to roll over to become a trainer. Being a trainer is a whole different aspect. you got to kind of pull your style away because every fighter is different. You know, um, I was taught more of the boxing style. Being Mexican, more was people expecting me to be that brawler. Brawler. Yeah. brawler. Boxer yeah. and brawler. Exactly. You know, but I was taught... Uh, my, my trainer was a Jerry Villarreal. He trained Hector Macho Camacho to, 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 to 10 years for three world titles. So I learned a lot about footwork and boxing. Um, my point is having a guy like James Kirkley now, you know, we're, we're, you know, what I was taught and what James does is two different aspects of boxing, so two different styles. And, you know, so as a trainer, you got to be able to know, okay, this might not work for this certain fight. This might not, you know, so, you know, it, it's tough. You know, a lot of fighters, they can't make that adjustment to become trainers. But thank God, you know, I've been able to do that. And, you know, I've been a trainer for 11 years and I've been working hard at it. Speaking of James Kirkland. Is the fight coming up May 7th versus Canelo Alvarez? Is that going to be the biggest fight of your career as far as in training? Definitely, definitely. This is a, you know, it's a big is, platform. Yeah, this is as big as it gets. You know, this is my opportunity, and you know, I've been, you know, I've been scratching on the door. You know, for it to open, and it's open. You know, James gave me an opportunity to work with him. And, you know, and we're just kind of moving forward, man. This is this is my shot, exactly. You know, um, filming the HBO 24/7 here and stuff. I grew up watching that stuff, and oh, yeah. now to be a part of it, it's it, it's a blessing. That's a tremendous blessing, and you know, it, it's it's to all those out there, man. That nothing's impossible, man. Especially when you involve God, man. You can climb more than hill at any time. Sure. And how is that going with you and and I mean, uh, excuse me, with you and James Kirkland? Having that he came from a from a gym like Anwolf, you guys are totally different, different style, isn't it? Um, somewhat, you know. I, I um, you know, I'm not. I'm not as close to James's as Ann, you know, and, you know, Ann's a phenomenal job with James, you know, that's something you can't take away. They had a great relationship inside and outside the ring. And I'm not here to, you know, replace him, but I'm just, I've been given a, a, a the opportunity, opportunity here, you know, and, and all I can do is grab it and run with it, you know. And how did that come about, the, you and James Kirkland? How did, how did that marriage happen? It's a blessing, man, you know, um, James wanted to bring camp to San Antonio and, you know, he went to a few gyms, looked around and, I mean, like most guys, I mean, we've had Adrian Broner here, Paulie Malignaggi, Mikey Garcia, um, Austin Trout, Wilfredo Vasquez. You had the all Real the... Brothers. You, you had the who's who in the boxing world. Exactly. here. Yes. They, That's you know, Boxing House of Champions. Yeah, they run through here, man. And, and, you know, so what they like about it is the gym, the atmosphere. So when you walk in here, you smell the gym, the bags, the gloves, the sweat, the hard work that's put in here, you know. This is not, you know, like I tell these guys, they want to go to a pretty facility, they can go to Gold's Gym or something. We're here to work. We're here to train. We're here to for fights and win fights so you know um the blessing part was james he said he wanted to bring camp here and uh he was looking for a trainer and he had a few options and this is something that i see as a big blessing because two different trainers that he came up to referred him to me you know uh baby mccain the conditioning coach is the one that was out kind of helping james look right, the right. trainer and he approached a couple people and you know they both told him hey you gotta go check rick out so 
you know, James is just from there. The shoe fit, like we it. lace oh, it up, and we're it. here, man. Yeah. Uh, how's everything going with you guys? Everything leading up to the fight is everything going as planned? Everything's smooth, man. Everything, everything is going great. You know, James is happy. James is confident. He looks James good, man. He, yeah. I mean, when he. When we first seen him at the uh, the press conference to now, wow, I mean, I, it's, it's a big difference. Oh, yeah, he's been working hard, you know, he's been working very hard, you know, all credit, a lot of credit goes to uh, Baby McClinton, you know, he's brought down that weight very well, he's keeping him in shape. Um, we also got Gerald Tucker, uh, senior part of our team, he's originally from Cincinnati, now living in Vegas, um, and he, he's bringing a lot of passion and a lot of uh, motivation to, to this team as well. Um, and, you know, we got a chip on our shoulders, man, you know, usually you see the fighter with a chip on his shoulder, we got the whole team trying to come out and proof and take advantage of the opportunity. Moving forward, I got to ask you because I know you're somewhat part of the money team and kind of tied in with Floyd Mayweather and all that good stuff. How do you see May 2nd, the fight that the world's going to watch, fight of the century and Floyd Money Mayweather versus Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao? How do you see that fight? You know, to set that to set that part of the conversation up, you know, I'm a um, I'm a big fan of Floyd. Um, when it comes to he's things, a good friend of yours yeah, too. Yeah, you know, when it comes to things like this, however, I'm not biased. Like, I, you know, I don't, I don't like to be wrong. So, uh, but Floyd is actually one of the nicest person I've ever met in my life, and I've been around a lot of top fighters. fighters. Yeah. You know, Floyd is, you know, um, to make it quick and short, man. You know, I wrote a, a letter reaching out to him as a trainer. You know, what I was doing and just. You know, I started getting a lot of um, hatred of darts thrown at me. You know, he's too young. He don't know what he's doing. But little they know that I was working. Every time they, while they were making their comments and thinking about me throughout their, their busy days, I was working and working at my craft. You know, um, he flew me and my dad to Vegas. He paid for our rooms, our flights, our hotel. I mean, he took care of us, gave us ringside tickets for the Canelo fight. So, you know... That kind of made me attached with Floyd in, in, in a way that was I always remember. So um, you know, he, point, he gets a lot of bad rap. He gets a lot of bad press. Do you think a lot of that's got to do because he's never lost? He's never gotten really close to losing. You know. Do you think that people just want to see him lose? Definitely. I mean, half of the arena when it's you know when you got a soda MGM Grand or something, half of their maybe rooting for him, but probably for the most part, they're hopefully he's going to lose. You know, and they've been wrong 47 times. So um, going into the fight, you know, I, I just I see this. I could be wrong. You know, and, and when this video gets posted up, I know all the comments in the bottom are going to say what they want. Um, but I see this being a pretty easy fight for Floyd. You know, I see I, that's just my opinion. Um, I see a guy in Manny Pacquiao who. Who has a lot to offer? He brings a lot of you know to the table as far as being able to to kind of break the give him angles. The, the he, he, code, right? Yeah, well, I mean, supposedly they're working on angles, and I think that they're, they're thinking that that's going to give Floyd problems. But you know, one thing I know, I'm taking away nothing from Manny Pacquiao. Um, everybody is fun. You can go down the list: Ricky Hatton, Antonio Margarito, Miguel Cotto's, um, all them guys. You know, one thing they had in common is these are guys who come straight forward in the line. You know, at the time, Miguel Cotto was that type of fighter. So he's changed a lot, but you know, they're, they're, so Manny Pacquiao is able to use them angles and his hand speed and, and work off combinations. Floyd to his is not advantage. Gonna, exactly. Floyd is not going to sit in front of him. You know, yeah. Floyd is not going to sit in front of him. He's going to use the ring. He's going to outbox him. And it is reportedly that Floyd Mayweather is working on power. Do you think that his power is underrated as it is right now? Um, you know, it's a tough question for me to ask. I've never been hit by Floyd. <laughs> but a lot but of if, guys if, that he has fought, if, if, he said he's uh, he's got more power than what people think. Yeah. That he just chooses to fight in defense. I see Floyd as a, one of the stinging kind of punches. Because they're saying that, I mean, the Mayweathers and, and Boxers and Brothers was, we had the opportunity to go up to uh, Vegas uh, just a few weeks ago. And we talked to uh, Jeff Mayweather. We talked to uh, uh, Roger. And they seem to think that they're going to knock Manny out. They're working on power, and they're pretty confident that that... Do you think that maybe the knockout of Marquez took a little bit out of him? Um, you know, it, well, first of all, Manny was looking phenomenal up to the knockout. You know, he got caught with a good shot, and, and we've seen that A shot that fighters. Marquez worked on in camp. Yeah, you look at Pacquiao. I mean, he stepped kind of right into it with his hands down. Ma Marquez, people might have been hearing all kind of, oh, it was a lucky shot. If you look at that fight, Marquez actually stepped back and shot the right hand. Right there, right in the, the button. Jab, and he caught him with a good shot. So, you know, it, it's if Floyd's working on the power, 
you know, I think that's just going to put his game to the next level because that's something he's been lacking a few fights. You know, he has the speed, the reflexes. And I don't know if he's lacking it other than choosing not to use it because he didn't really need it. But I think he's going to need it to fend off some of the pressure that Manny's going to want to give him. Yeah, you definitely. Think? You know, he's going to have to take Manny's confidence away early, early in the fight. And, you know, like I said, and for me, it's just pretty simple, man. I just think Floyd's going to, you know, go in there and do what he does best and, and win, and win fights. You know, whether people enjoy the style or not, he's going to win the fight. I think it's going to be a good fight. Me personally, I see Mayweather winning a decision. I don't think he's going to be close. I think he's going to probably maybe seven to five rounds, something yeah, like that. At, I'm looking know. at about nine to three. Nine to three? Yes. Yeah, Whereas some of the, our, our, our other colleagues here at Boxing and Brothers seem to think that Manny's going to come on pressure him, maybe do enough to steal a lot of the early rounds. And maybe get a decision. But, well, make sure I get those guys' numbers so I can place my bets. I'll let you know. As a matter of fact, right when you're looking in the camera, look a little further. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rick, for having us no here at your establishment. Morona's you. Boxing House of Champions here in San Antonio. Boxersandbrawlers.com. See you later, man.